ladies and gentlemen and viewers of all ages, allow me to say on to you, Excelsior! Yes, we are looking at Marvel Heroes, the game being developed by Secret Identity Studios and published by Gazillion Entertainment. This is an action RPG in the style of Diablo. As you can see, we have a point-and-click interface where you move around and we are playing as the Wolverine. So, why the Wolverine? Well, uh, because right now I have a Facebook poll for this game. And uh, I'm actually trying to get input on what characters people would like to see when covering this game when it fully releases. And that is on uh, facebook.com slash Kage. So, we're playing Wolverine. So this game right now is in open beta. It is the weekend. It is currently May 4th. And so this game will be going on all the way into Monday morning. Anyone wants to play just has to go to marvelheroes.com. Plunge. There we go. So yes, we are starting off with Wolverine. This is an area that is actually a higher level than my Wolverine. My Wolverine is, if you look at him here, level 1. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and start with him since Wolverine is currently the most popular character on the Facebook poll. And I feel like slashing cars. It's beautiful. So, action RPG, style of Diablo, as you can see, we've got a health bar in the lower left-hand corner. We've got a mana bar in the lower right-hand corner. Those are the circles you see with the giant numbers, 340 and 100, respectively. So, mana in this game is actually spirit. Same thing, though. It is a resource that you deplete to use special moves. As you can see, if I use this lunge, it takes away my spirit. And if I don't use it, after a while, it starts to re regenerate. And as you can see, it regenerates pretty quick. We can just go around here, going from enemy to enemy. And as you can see there, as long as I've got the spear, I can just kind of go right through and I can change direction quickly. So I've been playing this game for a bit, every now and then. And unfortunately, I'm going through this little instance area. I do believe it's instance because I haven't seen other players. Uh, but I've been going through this. And I just haven't had a lot of time to play. So you're not going to be able to see any high-end footage from me, and I apologize for that. Unfortunately, what's been happening with this game is they have a schedule on when they test. And they test on certain days. It's not always open. And unfortunately, I'm typically at work when the beta is actually playable. And I've been only able to play about once every other week. You know, one day every other week. Oh, here we go. Just dash on through. How's that? That is fun. I love that move. As you can see, I can still attack, and I will gain my spirit back as long as I'm not using a move that consumes it. Basically, as long as I'm using a basic power, which is what my current slash is. Yeah, this is going to take a while to kill some of these enemies. Unfortunately, it does not show me what level they are. But I do know they are higher level than me, and I'm sitting on some elites right here. Who are quick, apparently, even though they are machine gunners, so there's really no point in them being quick, but hey, that's okay. That's what random systems will do. Let's tear through some of these thugs, and we can look at some of the systems, so I'll go ahead and use a health pack. I have a health, health pack slotted on slot H. So, much like in the style of, say, Diablo 2, you will probably be using health potions to stay alive. But this game also does things that Diablo 3 does. In fact, they drop health globes. So as you're killing enemies... I'm just going <laughs> to... This will take a bit, I'm sorry. Uh, as you're killing enemies, you'll see there's some globes. These ones are yellow. Those are experience orbs. So you pick them up, you get additional experience. And what happens is as the orbs lay on the field, they will get smaller. And the smaller they get, the less of a bonus you will get from them. So the yellow ones are, are experienced, there are red ones, which are health, and uh, I believe there's also blue, which blue I believe gives back spirit, and there's some purple ones that I've seen, or at least ones that look purple. And I can't exactly tell you what those do, so I'm not sure on that. So this game has tons of classes, right? You think of Diablo 2, you had, you know, like your paladin, you had your... Uh, Necromancer, or even D3, you've got your um, Barbarian, Demon Hunter, and all that. Marvel Heroes has that too, but in this game, classes are called Heroes. 
So every single Marvel character that they put in this game is going to be their own unique class, and that means there's going to be tons of classes in this game. So lots of variety. Of course, because there will be so many... Let's grab that health globe. Because there will be so many, I'm a little concerned that some of the characters might start to tread on each other and feel like uh, they're the same. But I'm not terribly worried about that. It is a concern, but I don't think it's going to be too big of a deal because when it comes to, like, say, a Marvel Universe, a lot of people have their own favorite heroes. And they may have, you know, like a second favorite hero, third favorite, whatever. Usually they're not going to play, or may not play, all the classes. If there's so many classes in the game, more the average player probably won't. They're going to gravitate towards the heroes they like. So if there are some heroes that are the same, that's not necessarily a bad thing, because then you can just pick the one that you want, has a certain aesthetic that you like. You know, for example, let's say you like Hawkeye and the Punisher, right? Or you, know, you might, those who like Hawkeye might not like the Punisher, something like that. And they're both ranged characters. They don't necessarily play the same. I'm just using it as an example of having ranged characters. But let's say they did. Unless you happen to pick both of those as the characters you like, it might not be a bad thing. I feel that as long as there's enough variety between them or enough aesthetic differences, or even just a few different items in their skill tree, they should be okay. And it won't be a problem if some of the characters are a little samey. So as we're going along here, we're gaining experience as we are to do in action RPGs. And again, this is this area is like a level 6 or 7 zone, so that's why you're kind of seeing me um, taking forever to kill some basic thugs as the Wolverine. My claws of adamantium are just not able to get through that nice three-piece suit that these uh, fine gangsters are wearing. But I have picked up some items. So let's talk about the inventory system in this game, shall we? Inventory is shared amongst all your characters. I'll go ahead and quickly switch to a different character that I've got unlocked. I'll go ahead and pick Hulk, for example. Now, you can switch between characters at any time in this game. As you can see, it just takes a slight cooldown. You swap characters, and you're good to go. Every single character, though, shares the same inventory. Thankfully, you have a fairly large stash so that you can put some items away and uh, use it at another time. You don't have to worry about taking up too much inventory. Uh, so far I haven't gotten far enough to know how itemization is going to be in this game, but uh, it, it's feeling like you, you might not have to carry a lot of unique items. It, you might carry an alternate weapon or an alternate piece of equipment for another hero that you might like. You can just throw it into your stash. Uh, so, uh, that's not too bad. I just kind of wish that each character, though, did have something else. Because what happens in this game is you have different costumes. And those costumes take up inventory slots. And so if you want to have multiple costumes, you have to take up that inventory. And inventory comes at a premium in games like this. So I kind of wish they would open that up. I'm a little concerned about that. I have found no way to expand your inventory. Now, this is a free-to-play game, which means you don't have to pay to pick it up. It's 100% free. Um, and usually in free-to-play games, they give you some way of doing things like that, giving you additional inventory space, whatever. I just haven't seen it on this. So let's go back to our Wolverine and show you what might be a point of concern for some people. In action RPG, one of the big things is gear, and picking up gear. And when you pick up gear, you start to get a look for your character. It happened in Diablo 2, even if there were only a few sets of uh, gear out there, there weren't a lot, but it's happened in every game kind of since. So you pick up gear, you look cool. In this game, they don't do that. It's all costume-based. I mentioned the costumes. Here's my basic costume. Everyone starts with it. You can actually remove it. Uh, and the reason for that is you can actually buff your costume. It becomes an extra uh, slot for equipment for you. So you can gain, you know, critical strike or power or whatever and then put it on. And if it were a different costume, it would override this one and you could see the effects. But when it comes to gear, it doesn't change anything. Like here, I got this bodysuit. If I equip it, it's going to be exactly the same as what I had before. All the bodysuits look the same. I have different claws here. This one gives me damage and defense penetration on any basic power. Now, that is the one interesting thing about this game that I've noticed, is a lot of the gear you get is geared towards your character type and your mythos. 
So for Wolverine, as you can see, the basic claws gain damage and penetration. So it seems like Wolverine is going to focus on penetrating the armor of his opponents. He will probably also get, like, uh, life regeneration and things like that. Here we have Grant's Quick Slash at rank 4. So this game takes the Diablo 2 kind of itemization, where you get items that will grant you skills. You also have ones that grant you plus the skills. In this one, you can see I've got plus two defense, and this gives me quick slash at rank four. So what does that mean? Well, if I go over here, let's see, quick slash. It's probably under here. Okay, it's your basic power. That's my basic attack right there. If I equip this, it's going to give me rank four quick slash. It doesn't matter how many points I have in this skill. If I've got this up to rank five, then equipping this belt would be useless to me other than the plus two defense. I've already got rank five. This only gives me up to rank four. It will not give me any additional benefit beyond that. If I've already got rank three and I equip this, it brings me up to rank four. It does not go up four ranks. But there is also equipment that will give you plus two skills, like right here, plus one to spider sense. So whatever my current skill in spider sense is, it will give me a plus one. Now, I do not believe that will take you from 0 to 1. You still have to have 1 point in that skill for this to actually work. So let's go ahead and just equip that. We can see my basic power has gone up. I've got a pretty nice attack speed here. You can see here's another claw with plus 1 to smell weakness. I'm not going to go ahead and use that for now. And, and as you can see, each item is based on each character. They're not shared. Which is, again, why I think having a shared inventory space for your characters may not be a great idea. Because if I'm finding all these items for different characters, I may want to hold on to them. You, I could always go back and go to my stash. Uh, but it just feels like things are going to get cluttered really quickly. Aside from that, there's also a crafting system, which you can see here I have nanotech filament, unstable molecules, things like that. These are all used in crafting in this game. So your inventory will start to be taxed. So a, you don't get uh, points to your stats like you would get in Diablo 2 or Torchlight. You have set stats for your character. You can see Wolverine has a set durability of 3, strength of 3, fighting of 3, speed of 2, energy 1, intelligence 2. So these are going to be familiar to anyone that's ever done Marvel trading cards. I used to do that a long time ago, way back in the day. And you just had these power cards that would give you a bio of the character, which you can, of course, access here. I mean, honestly, this character screen feels like a trading card. You've got your bio. You've got Here you've got the breakdown of your stats, so that's very much for the game. And, of course, your fighting strength. Each one of these actually will give you some kind of benefit. So durability, you can see, reduces damage um, and improves health regeneration, and it reduces stuns. You can actually be weak in an area. For example, energy. Wolverine is only a 1 in energy, so he actually takes more energy damage and more mental damage than other characters. At rank 2, you're average. You're typical, you have no benefit, and you have no weakness. So that's kind of cool that some characters will actually be weak in certain areas. So as Wolverine, I might want to be careful of mystical attacks and things like that. As you go up, for example, strength, you can see here you can get uh, projectile damage reduction, physical damage reduction, uh, health regeneration at higher levels, etc., etc. And this will happen for each one of these. If you look down the line, you'll notice that here Wolverine will actually get a fourth durability at rank 17. So you're not putting these points in yourself. They are going to grow for you as you go along, and they're going to grow based on your character and, your again, your background and mythos. So each character will grow differently. So you almost might equate that to the way Diablo 3 did it because your characters gained, like, I think it was two or three in your primary stat, and then a, I think it was three in a primary, two in a secondary, and one in everything else, something like that. In this, it's kind of the same, except for uh, the points are very deliberate. It's not a standard you will always get, you know, 3 2 1, 3 2 1. As you can see, I will get a fourth durability at 17, a fifth at 47, so Wolverine will naturally gain health regeneration, energy, and physical damage. And then the other uh, two here, you would have to get through items. And you can find items that will do that. Typically, I believe a lot of that will come from costumes because you can upgrade those. His strength will not go up. His fighting will go up at 10, 25, and 40, and 54. So Wolverine will maximize his fighting potential. So he won't need any gear with plus fighting on it. Speed he will gain at 32, and that's it. So he'll gain one more speed. He will not gain energy. He does gain one intelligence. 
So as you can see here, Wolverine is very much going to gain a little bit of speed. He will mostly be fighting. He will have a little bit, uh, well actually he won't get any more strength, but he will ha uh, have more durability. So that's kind of cool. I like the fact that each character will grow in their own way. And it kind of fits for the character because, you know, a lot of people might say, well, I like being able to set my stat points. And a lot of people do like that in their action RPGs. But when you think about this being a um, Marvel game, you know, you have to kind of stay true to the characters a lot of the time. And because of that, because they're staying true to the character, because they're keeping it real, uh, let, let's talk about the one problem with the inventory system since I got a little sidetracked off of that. Let's go ahead and go back into that. Again, the, the, the costumes don't change here. They don't. But, if you want a different look, you can still look different. Let's go into the shop. I'll show you how this works. In this game, you're given five starting heroes. Okay? Uh, let me kind of go here. You start off with, of your choice, you get Hawkeye, Scarlet Witch. Let's see, who else do you get? Um, Storm is one of the characters you start with, and Thing. Those are your five starters. If you want anything else you need to either buy them or find them. So you do not have to buy heroes. You don't have to. You can play this game 100% for free. You don't need to put any money into it, okay? But if you want to get the heroes you want, you're probably better off coming into the store. So if you want a particular hero, you'll want to look here. Because otherwise you're going to be out looking for not only a hero, but for a costume that you want. As you can see here, there's quite a few characters. Uh, from across the Marvel universes, including our wonderful friend Deadpool, uh, Iron Man, which has got a huge promotion right now. Iron Man with Iron Man 3 coming out. They have tons of costumes for him, even obscure characters uh, or ones that I didn't even know about. Maybe not, not so much obscure if you're following Marvel, but like Rocket Raccoon, things like that. I don't know how much each of these G's or credits or whatever they are will balance out to real money currency my guess is going to probably be 100 to 1, so maybe 100 of these to $1. It's possible. If that's true, you can see that some of these costumes are going to be $9, $6. Captain America might be $12, something like that. At any point, you can just go ahead and unlock one of these characters through money that you want to spend at the store. And again, I can't tell you because that button doesn't work right now. But you can also find these characters by killing uh, or defeating Marvel villains out in the world. So there's always a chance you can, you can find what you want if you're patient and you want to wait. Maybe you like everything Marvel and you don't care and you're just going to get what you get. That's fine. You will also find costumes in the world. But if you want a particular costume, once again, the store is where you will want to go. There's not much for Panther here, but you can see there is about three Black Widow costumes. And the costumes are fairly expensive, too. I mean, you can see here a 1000 for the classic, 900 for the basic, and 650 for the uh, original go to Captain America. See, he's got about six costumes. So he, not all characters are created equally when it comes to costumes. Some have a few. There will be more added. Make no mistake about that. I mean, this is very much in beta. This game, let me just reiterate, beta is beta. Anything at any time can change. And this game has gone through quite a few changes. And mostly for the better. Uh, I'll talk about the gameplay and what I think about the game here. Uh, in a bit as well. So let's just, let's just take a look at the costume so you can get an idea of what to expect. Daredevil only has one so far. Daredevil, has, or sorry, Deadpool has quite a few, including a pirate costume, which has alternate voice acting, I might add. All the Deadpool costumes are his typical self, but the pirate one, he will actually talk with a pirate accent, you know, the Yar mateys. He has a cutlass instead of his katana. Uh, things like that. Of course, again, keep in mind the items you equip won't show up on your character. So if you want a particular look, it has to be in the costumes. But they're going to have premium costumes like this pirate costume that are going to have unique effects and things like that. As you can see, all his other costumes are nowhere near as expensive. This one is $15.50 compared to $8, $4.50, well, $16. It looks like that one's a little bit more, isn't it? X-Force. Kind of surprising. I figured this one would be a bit more. Right, go on to Hawkeye. You can see he's got his Avengers and Modern. Uh, he does have a movie version. Uh, that's the beautiful thing about the Marvel movies being out is that you will find movie version of all the characters. So if you want a movie Thor, you can have him. Iron Man, again, here's the main promotion right now. Uh, what is this? Two, four, six, eight, nine different Iron Man costumes here. 
Uh, quite a few of them are from the movie. Several from the comic books, of course. Lots of Iron Men here. He is the big promotion right now. So we've got a few for Jean Grey, as you can see. Uh, Miss Marvel, just kind of go down the line here a little bit quicker. Punisher has three costumes. Rocket Raccoon, only one so far. A few for Scarlet Witch. Three for Spider-Man. They've already got more than this on their website, so you know the costumes will be uh, available. They just haven't put them into the game just yet. Storm. Thing. Thor. And there you go. As I said, there's Avengers Thor right there. So if you want to look like the Thor from the Avengers, you can. If you want to look like classic Thor, Destroyer Thor, whatever, all there. Wolverine, quite a few costumes as well, being a popular character himself. And that's pretty much all the costumes that you can see here. Let's go. These claws ain't gonna pop themselves. So what else can you buy with money since this is a free-to-play? Is this pay-to-win? Well, I can't really tell you if it's pay-to-win. Honestly, a lot of what you buy here is costumes and heroes, really. That's it. They haven't really put anything else in except for this. Experience boosts. Well, that's kind of a standard. You get that in any free-to-play game. Uh, rarity boost. You can buy a item rarity boost. It lasts for an hour. Uh, as you can see, if it's if I'm correct about my 100 to 1 ratio, this is $1.50 for that. That's not bad. So you can basically buy experience and rarity boost. So you're basically paying for additional magic find. Uh, you know what? I don't see any fault in that, really, because, again, that's kind of a pay-for-convenience thing. Maybe you don't play very often. There's so many costumes, so many items to find. I don't fault anyone for not having a lot of time wanting to be able to buy these, and I don't see it really affecting people that do have a lot of time. There's also the retcon device. This is going to allow you to respec your power. So you do have a respec system in the game. Currently costs 300 When the NDA on this game broke, this was 750 I actually tried to do a video on this, turned out very rough, scrapped it, so we'll see how this one goes. Uh, but as you can see, there will be a way to respect your powers. Uh, I'm going to talk about the powers here in a moment as well. And there's also this random thing here. We'll give you a random retcon, experience, rarity, or a costume. So if you don't want to, if you want to roll the dice, this is the way to do it. You can get a retcon, experience, a rarity, or possibly a costume, and it's only for 150G. That's not bad. 150G for a chance at a costume? You know, keep in mind again, though, that you might not get it. Who I don't know how often that'll happen. Specials is not available right now. All right, well, since I leveled up, let's talk about powers. This is a Diablo-esque game, action RPG, so obviously you're going to have a skill tree. Uh, here we have a quick slash for Wolverine. All trees for each character are very different. In fact, Wolverine is one of the first characters I've seen that has a branching skill tree. Here, Quick Slash can go into Bloody Slash or go down into Hack and Slash. And not many characters do that. Some just go straight forward. Just like any tree, you can see that certain powers won't unlock until certain levels. So this Rending Sweep here won't unlock until 4. I've got three trees of Claws, Ferocity, and Weapon X. So you can see some of these don't even have requirements. Only Claws has requirements for Wolverine. Everything else is just kind of out there. These are very much unfinished, as you can see, like here, I'm the best there is. It has no picture. A lot of these don't have any pictures. It looks like these are going to be passives here in the Ferocity section, so the, you do have that. Uh, here we have del Deliver a Brutal Claw Swipe that knocks down an enemy. Spin Fury to increase the damage and knock down duration. Okay, let's grab that. Uh, since it mentioned Fury, I'll point that out right here. There is a bar here that's Fury for Wolverine. As you do damage, you will gain Fury. So almost like a barbarian mechanic in Diablo, but you also have spirit as well. Uh, so I'll go ahead and grab that. In order to use the ability, I'll have to confirm my points, so we'll do that here in a moment. Smell weakness, sniff out your enemy's weakness, rendering them vulnerable to attacks. If I mouse over this plus, we can see what it actually does. It's minus 76 defense, and it lasts for five seconds. So that is very much an active. So there are passives. Doesn't look like Wolverine has any right now. Let's just go ahead and confirm. And I'm going to take this brutal slash and put it down here. As you can see, you have a left mouse button, and it will show you when I mouse over it what my range is. You can see there it is. It's kind of a uh, arc there. And then I have Furious Swipe, or, or Furious Lunge, sorry, Lunge into Combat with Claws Outstretched. And now I have this Brutal Slash, which delivers a Claw Swipe, uh, knocks down an enemy. And so as you can see, I have A, S, D, F, G, H. You can rebind those. Unfortunately, this game does not seem to recognize the alternate mouse buttons uh, for my mouse. So my mouse 4 and 5 do not work with this game. So let's go ahead. I've got one point of fury, it looks like. Or no, I've gotten to two nodes now. It's going up pretty quick. That's good to see. Let's try this ability, shall we? I'll go ahead and... 
There it is. Jumps and slashes. Now, unfortunately, uh, what it looks like is if I use the ability, he doesn't automatically move to the opponent. So that is something that this game does struggle with. Not all powers are quite set up right. Um, some powers have fixed that. So when it comes to this ability, I have to stand next to the enemy in order to use it. I guess you could say that's more of a skill shot, but because it's a melee ability, I really think it should probably bring you up to the enemy in order to use it. I think they will do that because there were some skills I've played with in the beta that did that, that's made you stop instead of walking towards the enemy, and those skills have been updated in this build to actually walk towards them. So they probably just have to change it if for each individual skill. Which means, yeah, you know, they might, some of them might fall through the cracks and will probably have to be reported. It's not too bad. So, uh, the skill tree. The skill tree in the combat. You know, the game feels pretty good. It's obviously 100% free. Um, the challenge of the game really depends on the character. I mean, here I am in this level that's several levels above me. Of course, I have leveled, you know, two times since. But Wolverine's doing pretty good. Some characters, though, really don't feel like they do too well at low levels. For example, my Spider-Man has been having some issues. He seems to take quite a bit of damage at times. Uh, although at other times, he does fairly well. It depends on the enemies he fights, like a lot of these enemies with guns. He tends to have a hard time at times because of how many have hit him at once. Wolverine does well. And, and I think, honestly, any melee character has a, is going to be a little more difficult in this game because of all the ranged combat and the hits you have to take. But Wolverine himself does pretty well simply because of his Weapon X ability healing factor. He regains health more quickly. As you can see, he gets 2 health per second, and leveling it up will give him 4 to 5. So I'll just go ahead and do that. And uh, let's go ahead and smell weakness. Anything else? Not right now. Confirm. Can't wait to try this out. Let's just go ahead and do Smell Weakness. So you can see it is kind of a shout. Takes a bit of spirit, but you can see how quickly Wolverine actually recharges spirit. So let's go up here and actually use it. And there you go. You can see each of these enemies now glowing a little bit. When it goes away, I can just go ahead and redo it. So the game is rough around the edges. I really feel that they haven't balanced all the characters yet. There's so many abilities, so many different characters, that I think that might be something they're going to struggle with. Some characters feel overpowered, some characters feel very weak. It is a co-op game at its core, so being overpowered really isn't so much of an issue. You are a superhero, right? So you would think it's designed to make your character feel powerful. And the challenge would probably come from, you know, maybe supervillains in the world. That's fine, but it doesn't feel good to be the character that's underpowered. They definitely have a problem, and I would like to see that be addressed. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get through some of this fairly quickly. It looks like I'm heading towards a dead end. I like that I can use this as a fast travel. It's hilarious. So we're going to go ahead and go into here and fight one of the Marvel villains. This is, again, this is an instanced area. I'm pretty sure no, no other players have come through. Uh, but this is an MMO, so there are going to be areas where you'll be fighting and other players will be around. And when you're in those areas that other players are in, you can have random supervillains attack. And those supervillains will be super powerful and they will be designed around having multiple characters fight them because you try and fight them by yourself and they're going to uh, have a ton of health. So it's really designed around this world event. It's like having a world raid boss or something like that. Um, let's see that. Knocked him down. Knocked uh, Doc, uh, Doc Ock down with that strike. Let's go ahead and make him weak again. We're going to try and knock him down. There we go. Spending rage. So whenever I get that rage up a point, I'll just go ahead and hit that. Very nice. Let's go ahead and do it again. Wolverine doing an admirable job here. I mean, again, I am kind of underleveled with him for this zone. But as we can see, that pretty much shows that Wolverine is um, very powerful. I'll just go ahead and use my health kit. There we 
go. Let's go ahead and cause a weakness. So it's really cool to see all these Marvel characters and be able to fight them. You know, fight Spider-Man villains, fighting, um, you know, Wolverines villains, X-Men. There's Magneto in here. And this is how your story is told. I'll go ahead and let you hear this. We won one. High five. You can't give a brother a high five? Thank you. I was looking for that. Sweet Christmas. Who the hell was that? Calls himself the Hood. So all the good names were taken? Don't underestimate him. That cape and hood? Let him teleport anywhere in the world. Intel says he's a serious pretender to Kingpin's throne. Damn it! Okay then. Good job, everybody. We just gave the Hood the edge he needs to take this entire city. Ain't gonna happen. Someone somewhere knows where this guy hangs his cape at night. We need to go to Fury with this. Actually, I think I know who we should talk to first. So there you go. That is one of the cool things about this game is the story is told in a motion comic way. You're not going to get these elaborate cutscenes. It's going to be just like you were reading a comic book, except going to be fully voice acted. And so far, the voice acting sounds pretty good. So I am happy to see that. What news do you bring? 